In the bottom right corner of the gameplay here, you can see I have some progress bars. In this case, it's an MP gauge and an HP gauge that are circular. And we're going to look into how to make it today, because it's actually not that complex and it can make your game look really cool. So let's start with a clean Unreal 5.1 project. The project files with the finished assets and the finished systems and everything is down below in the description on my Patreon. If you want to check it out, you can download it right from there. But for now, let's get started. We're going to be making a custom material that we'll then use in a widget blueprint. So getting started, making the material, we'll call this something like material circle bar. And when the material opens up, we're going to change that from material domain. That's on surface by default, there's not going to be a surface, it's going to be a user interface. And you can immediately see that that gets rid of so many pins. So this is going to simplify things quite a bit for us. Then the blend mode is going to be a masked blend mode, meaning that we can put in an opacity mask and that will drive which pixels can either be fully seen or fully not seen. There's no gradient in the opacity here. And that is very much by design. So let's get started by adding a radial gradient exponential. And plugging that into the final color, we can see that it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a radial gradient with an exponential fall off. We're not going to be using that in the final color, however. The final color itself is just simply going to be a value of 1, so that it is entirely white. We're going to be using this radiant exponential for our opacity mask. So if we put that into there, we can see it suddenly becomes a circle. And if you want a system with a full circle instead of a bar like I had in my game, this is everything you need to do for the mask. But if you want a health bar or something like that, that's circular, in most cases you probably want that option at least, you're going to need to do a few more steps before we get to the actual progress bar programming here. It's relatively simple though, because what we do is we copy over this gradient exponential and then we make a scalar value here by holding down one and left clicking. And from experience, I know I set this to 0 0.6 and that's going to go into the radius of the top one, making it a fair bit larger. I think the default radius is, yeah, 0 0.5. So it's a little bit bigger than the default. Then we're going to subtract another value from that. There's no real reason to make this a separate node. It's just easier to read from my perspective. And let's subtract 0 0.2 from that and put that into the radius. Then we can simply subtract the bottom one from the top one. And if we put that into the opacity mask, we then get our circular progress bar. It's as easy as that. And now this one is pretty much just the thickness. So if we put this to 0 0.1, that's a little too low. So 0 0.15, it's a lot thinner. If that happens to you and you set this value a little too low and things become entirely black, what you do is you select the output node here. And then under blunt mode, we have an advanced menu. And there we have the opacity mask clipping value. If you put this to a lower number, that should solve that issue. So if we put this to 0.1, for instance, we can see that's a little too low, 0.2 maybe. That also does fix the issue. And that's how we make a simple circle using math. But this circle doesn't crop itself yet. And that is where the real fun is going to start. So let's get into that. The way we do that is, first and foremost, we make a custom rotator here. And that's going to need a UV input, uh, simply the texture coordinates. Then it also needs an input here from 0 to 1 for the rotation angle. That is just where the rotational position starts in your circle. So I believe by default it starts here. And we want 0 0.25, so it starts a quarter ahead of that. From that we will subtract another value, and this time that value is 0 0.25. 0.5, which we will then multiply with a vector 2, which you can make by holding down the 2 key and then clicking on the screen. And this will be a value of 1 and negative 1. This is just the direction that the cropping is going to go. So one of these is whether or not it goes up to down, and the other one is whether it goes left to right. It's easy to just experiment with what these numbers do after the entire system has been made. Now that we have these vectors, we can make a vector to radial value node, and that will output a vector converted to angle. To that angle, we will add a percentage. 
let's say by default just for visual purposes we're gonna put that at 0 0.5 this will eventually become our parameter that we influence from our widget blueprints or however we want to influence this so let's convert that to a parameter and call it percentage then we want to make sure that we floor the output of that and that just makes sure that it always rounds down so if the value that comes out of this is 1.9 it becomes one it doesn't become two until we have reached past a value of two and we've kind of gone past <laughs> where the output nodes are but now we simply take our radians that are subtracted from each other and we multiply that with the output of this flooring and that then becomes our opacity mask. So the moment I put this into here, you will see that half the progress bar disappears. And if I now put, let's say 0.2 in here, we can see there's only a little bit of it left. Changing in this vector, the Y from negative one to positive one, you can see it turns around. And if I put a negative one here, it turns upside down. So if we say this is one and one, that's fine. You could make this a parameter as well, if you wanted to. I don't particularly care about that for the time being. So let's set this percentage uh, by default back to a value of one. And that is our material. So now let's implement that in a widget blueprint because that's in the end what we want, a UI element that is a circular progress bar. So in user interface, we're gonna make a widget blueprint, just a user widget, and we'll call that a circular bar. Uh, WBP for widget blueprint as the prefix because I'm trying to be better at naming things. And they will add simply an image, which is going to be very, very big, because we don't even have a canvas or nothing. And in the brush settings here, we can actually change this image to a material. So if we change that to the material circular bar, you can see it changes to the circular bar. Oh, and if it's a stretch like this, because it's all full screen, uh, what you can do is come up here to fill screen and change that from fill screen. To custom and that just makes it into a custom resolution so let's say we want this to be 500 by 500 to be square and proper like we want it to be now let's go over to the event graph here and in the event pre-constructs we're going to uh, do a little bit of fancy stuff let's start off by making a function here and we'll call that something like progress bar fill something like that in here we'll create a dynamic material instance that's a material instance that can be changed on runtime which is obviously something we need because it's a progress bar and the parent of that is going to be a input for our function then we'll take the variable for the image we just made and drag it in and we'll set the brush from material and drag it over to the material slot there from there we can use this material to also set a scalar parameter value. And we have to make sure that that exactly matches the name that we typed in here. So the easiest way is to just copy that over and paste that into here. And that value is also going to be an input to this function. And I'll add some rerouting nodes so it's easier to read. To make this function a little bit more reusable, instead of using this variable for this image directly, what we can do is we can set this target to also be a input for the function. If we click on the input node here, we can rename the input. So the parent will be the input material that we're going to use. So material, then the value can be, well, just the value and the target can be the image. Now this will work, but there's a way that we can optimize this a little bit better because right now it's creating a new material instance every frame of the game. While if a material instance already exists, we don't actually need to make a new one. So what we can do, and it's important if you use this for multiple bars within the same widget blueprint, is that you make a material variable for every single one of those. So it does introduce a way for things to break just a little bit. But what we can do is disconnect everything there, and instead we can promote this to a variable and we'll call that mat instance something like that and then we can use the material instance variable everywhere we plugged in the material instance before the amazing thing about this is that at the start of our function though 
we can now check whether or not this material instance has a value already. So if we say uh, is valid, we can use this one with the question mark. And if it is already valid, we can skip creating the dynamic material instance and we can immediately go to setting the brush for material. And if it is not valid, we can create one and it will only do this the first time. Now, back in the event graph, we can just in event pre-construct, we do this in pre-construct so that we can change this in the editor itself. If we do it on event construct, it will only work on the actual gameplay runtime. We can add in the progress bar fill function. And here we can say what image do we want to put it in? Well, we want to put it in the only image variable that we have. The value we can make into a variable actually. So let's right click this promote to variable, make it public so that if we put this into another widget, which we'll do in a moment, uh, we can actually influence that from that other widget. And then the material, we can simply uh, look up our circle material bar. And now we have this function doing what it should be doing. So if we go back into the designer here, we can see there's no bar. And that's because our uh, value, probably by default, we should set that to one, right? So that we can actually see what we're doing. And now it is back. And now it will work in your editor here in the viewport. But if you wanted to work on runtime as well, uh, make sure to hook up the event tick to this as well. That makes sure that it keeps updating throughout the entire time that you're playing the game. The amazing thing is, if we add in another widget blueprint now, and we'll call this one uh, just something like widget blueprint HUD. For this one, we're going to add a simple canvas panel, and then we can actually add widget blueprints that we've made ourselves. So if we look for widget blueprint circle bar, which I horribly misspelled, you can see it is an option that we can create. So let's set the size here to 300 by 300, something like that. It's nice and big. And you'll also notice that we have a value variable. And if we put that somewhat lower, uh, it starts at a weird position, which makes sense because I put both of these at <laughs> uh, minus one. So again, you can do whatever you want with that. There's a little issue here that if we go beyond the value of one, things start to look a little bit weird. So what you might want to do here in your circle bar widget blueprint is if you select the value variable, we can say a slider range from zero to one and a value range from zero to one as well. And if we now compile that, we can see the value variable here has changed into a slider and we cannot set it to a value higher than one. So if we try to set it to three, it automatically clamps to one. And you probably do want to make sure that it's lined up with the proper corner here as well, because otherwise you might be confused as to why it's not showing up in your game. And from here, we can simply say our widget blueprint circle bar. We can set the value in the event tick to whatever we want to programmatically do with it. So I'll just whip up something uh, real quick that adds 10% every time we interact with the actor. I'm not going to go over that because it's just to show things off. And now we have no circular progress bar. And if we pick one thing up, we have 10% and 20% and 30% and so on and so forth. So that is how you make a circular progress bar. You can, of course, use this for an HP bar where you have a max HP and a current HP. You divide those by each other and you get the output from there. And that way you have a full bar at the beginning and then it goes down as you lose HP or MP or stamina or whatever you're using it for. So this can be a very useful thing to implement in a variety of different situations. So if you want to play around with this project, the project file, as I stated before, is down below in the description through my Patreon. If you want to either just take this project file or compare it to your own or whatever, do feel free to check out the Patreon. And I'll be back next time with some more interesting stuff. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thank you to Eleanor for supporting at the Cave Digger tier on Patreon.